Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to Lunch and Learn with Code Bears. My name is Bill Golis. I will be today's uh, presenter. And we're talking about sales order management in Epicor. Just the basics today. Let's get going. We're going to talk about fundamentals, and then we'll go through a demo in Epicor Kinetic. Sales orders. What do we got? Hey, we got an order. So we need to process that order through Epicor. Typically, that's going to start with receiving a purchase order from your customer. Although a, a purchase order is not necessary to enter in the system, uh, you can process an order with, without a PO. And then once we get started on creating a sales order, we're going to enter the basics onto the sales order uh, detail screen, which is going to be, who are we selling it to? Uh, what per, what PO information do we have? Where are we shipping it to or who are we shipping it to? And dates. When does it have to be completed? When does it have to arrive at the uh, ship to address? Then we go on down to the line information. This is basically what are we selling? So what are the goods and what's the quantity that we're going to be selling? And the pricing information as well. A sales order has to answer uh, six fundamental questions. Who is the order for? What's the order on? Where do we need to ship it to? When does it need to get there? How are we shipping it? And what's the quantity of the order? Now, we can have multiple lines and multiple releases, and we'll get to that uh, when we do our demonstration on an order. But we do need at least a single line and a single release uh, to have a valid sales order. So basically, we're going to create our uh, detail. So, you know, who we're selling it to, where it's going. Then we're going to create lines, what we're selling, our part or parts, and uh, then we're going to uh, modify a release as, as needed if there's going to be more than a single release on the line. The other things that we're going to be talking about before we get to the demo is, from order management, is the order make direct. So are we going to create a job uh, that's going to be linked directly to this order? I need 10 widgets going you know, for, a, for you know, a customer Acme, and I'm going to create a job just to create those 10 widgets. Are we going to buy the item to the order? So if we're going to resell, perhaps, you know, we're going to buy an item from either, uh, you know, from another vendor, and then we're going to buy it and then uh, and resell it to this customer, you know, uh, then that would generate a specific purchase, a suggestion linked to this order. If we are doing a make direct where we're going to create a job, there is a function, a tool from within a, the order entry screens where you can do the the order job wizard and basically create the job right from the order and bring forward your your uh, the parts, your quantities, et cetera. And the order can also be linked to a quote. So if we did quote something on this, and your customer reaches out to us, hey, I'm buying from quote one, two, three, four, five, we can link that uh, in this order to that quote or vice versa beyond the scope of today's demo is from that quote, we can create this order with a with a uh, a quote to order wizard. Yeah, that in a nutshell is our sales order entry stuff. Now we're going to do a demo in 2023.2.5 of how this actually works. Let me bring up my kinetic here. I'll put it on the same screen. And order entry is where we're going to start to enter this order. It did not give me a kinetic screen here. And we're set to kinetic, and it should at least have the ops. And we have our sales order entry, not classic, regular. Give me the there we go. So we're going to create a new order here. So from our opening grid, we're going to go to the new order. We're going to select that. We need to first populate our customer. So we're going to say it's going to be Dalton for today's purposes. We're going to enter that in. Now we're going to assume that we have a purchase order from this client. So we'll put this in as 9876540 and the ship to. So uh, customer records can have multiple ship tos on them. This is either the default ship to is plant one, which is going to be uh, this address here. Let's go ahead and see if we don't have another ship to on here. And we do. Let's go with plant two here. I'm going to select. So this one was in Nina, Wisconsin. Let's see where this looks like Dubuque, Iowa. And once we load it in, we have Dubuque, Iowa. Also on our sold to, uh, we had an attention here that was defaulting in a primary we probably have more than one on here, and we do. I will leave Manny as our attention for the sold to. On the ship to, we want to tag this to a person, and we do have a attention at the site, so I, we will select Jim. So now we're set with our, our sold to, our PO. We need a today's date will populate into the order date. We need to put in a the need by and ship by dates. So uh, by default, uh, when we select a need by date, the ship by is going to be the same. We may know, hey, 
Bucks is going to Dubuque, Iowa. That's going to be a the overnight point from from where I'm at here in Chicago. So I'm going to select the previous day so that we know that we want to ship it uh, uh, on the 21st to arrive on the 22nd. What else do we want to talk about here? Counter sales. So a counter sale, uh, and not a lot of manufacturers do this, but some do. If you have uh, if you have some parts in stock and uh, and you're basically just saying, hey, I'm going to sell these off the shelf, and I want to generate a packing slip and perhaps an invoice at the same time. So the actual goal of this is, you know, someone comes into your shop and says, hey, I want to buy 10 of those. And you say, okay, you're going to do a transaction right there. He gives you his credit card, he or she. And when you select the counter sale, you can then select, hey, I want you to print the pack slip and the invoice right away with this transaction once I save it. And then you can complete the whole transaction in one fell swoop, uh, hence a counter sale. But for today's, we're not going to do a counter sale. So uh, once we're here, it's going to be, Either ready to process is taxation linked to Avalara, so we probably won't be too concerned about that. The ready to fulfill is going to make this order available in the fulfillment workbench. If you use a fulfillment, allocate your uh, parts, or is this on hold because I don't want it to be available to ship yet. And now we've created our detail. We should be able to save this now and get a sales order number, but we have no line yet. What are we selling? So we're going to go ahead here and we're going to go to our lines, and then we're going to add a line here. Now, we're in the grid here. I could do this on the detail, uh, but I happen to know my part, and we can search for it too. It's going to be 001P. Once I enter that, it should bring in our description. This part does not have a revision. How many do we want? We're going to say they're buying 100 of these babies, and what's our price here? We have a uh, $1 already populating from potentially a, a price list. We're going to say these are going to be 20 bucks. Then we can go ahead and save that and it's going to populate our ship by and need by. So, so we've created that line here. Let's go to our line detail now. Here we are with our line detail. We have our part number, we have our order quantity, we have our price of 20 and we can see that it didn't bring in our need by and ship by. So we're going to have to reset those. So we said it was going to be 22nd, and we were going to go with the day earlier to ship. This a discount is coming in because it's on the uh, on the customer record, so we'll just leave that as it is. And we could, although, override that and then select here zero, and then we shouldn't have any discount. If we're linking to a quote, we would put that information in here, but we aren't for today's purposes. For our what's available, you can see here, you know, what's on hand, what's available, and what's on this line, and what's shipped. We actually have none on hand, and we are negative on inventory, and we see our price is going to be at 2000 bucks because we have 100 by 20. Once this is all saved, that should give us one release against this. And let's just verify that. We'll check our release here. And it says, yeah, it's a single release here. It's firm. Now, if we wanted to create additional releases, by default, depending on how you're set on your company config, if you create additional releases, it's going to increase your line quantity. So if we were to go here and to add a release, what would happen is it would increase the quantity from 100 to 100 plus that release quantity. But if we were at the line level, line detail if we select the lock line quantity then and we're going to demonstrate this here we're going to go to our releases here so we have a single release for 100 we're going to add a release here and we're going to make this release for 25 pieces we're going to select a date of hey, the following week let's say and we'll ship day early and now we see it's 100 for release one and 25 for release two because i set the lock we should get a decrement and there we go 75 and 25 so that lock line allows you to have if you're going to say have a large blanket order of, uh, you know, a thousand pieces, and you want to create, you know, uh, uh, you know a 90 piece per month as a release schedule, you can just create all those 90s, and it will decrement down and keep the line number and the line quantity the same. So that's just depending on what you want to do. You either lock that line quantity or you don't need to increase those up. Those the line quantities with the releases. So let's go ahead and create one more line here. And we'll do this for a different part number. So we're going to search this here. Oh, I'm sorry. We're going to search this real quick to get another part. And we'll select that one, that in. And here we're going to go with 50 pieces. And we'll put this on the same date as the second release for the other one. So at the same time. Okay. Hey, so now we have a, a sales order with a multiple lines. And line one has multiple releases. And once you've created your sales order, you're going to want to acknowledge back to your client, hey, this is what I have 
came out of order for you. Here's kind of the feedback loop. And that's going to be from printing your, your sales order acknowledgement. Okay. When you print that, we can just go from, yeah, it's for the single order. So we're going to go ahead and print preview that to see how it renders. This is the base report. And while this runs, most often you're going to then email this to your client, I assume. And you, and you see here, there's our sold to. Here's our ship to with that. And we have Jim versus a Manny from our different contacts. Each line is going to display the release schedule indented on that line. So on line one, we have, a, have two releases. On line two, we have the single release. and and a discount popped in here for 2% because that was on the customer record and I didn't take it off. How you manage your emailing to your clients here, you know, getting this a document to the customer varies by company. We have a very nice tool here at Coda Bears called the Quick Print Utility, where from this screen where you're going to run your sales order acknowledgement, we have a customization that will look up the email, a record for that client. We'll create that PDF, we'll drop it into an Outlook, a message, and then you can send that directly to your client. And then you can manage that via Outlook. So if you had to go back later and your client said, hey, you know, did you send me that, uh, that sales order acknowledgement? You can just go into your Outlook sent items and then you can see where it's at and resend it or you know, check those records. If anyone's interested in the quick print utility for sales order acknowledgements, it also works for purchase orders and for invoices and for some other customer facing documents and, and vendor facing documents. Just hey, let us know and we'll be happy to show you how that works here from Coda Bears. So that is the sales order acknowledgement and sales order process from receiving a PO to sending the acknowledgement back to the customer. The one thing I didn't cover is the order job wizard. So let me show you that real quick before we finish up here. Bring this one back back up real quick. And the uh, the order in the interest of brevity, I'm just going to show you this within classic screens. And the order job wizard is going to be driven by the release and the a make direct function here. So when we are uh, not set to make direct under our actions, the an order job wizard is going to be grayed out. But when we do select a make direct here, go back to our actions menu, we're going to and save. We should see under actions that the order job wizard now exists. And from here, we can select that and the system will allow us to create a job directly for this order, for these parts. And that's a handy tool if you make to order. And that's all I have today, sales order management. All right, have a great afternoon, everyone. Thanks for joining. Want more Coda Bears Lunch and Learn? Check out our channel for more videos or contact us on our website for registration information.